Hey guys, this is just from it's chromeOS.com and in this video I'm gonna be going through some of the Linux centric torrent clients for Chrome OS. So turn enough it's my favorite deluge. I already added the install preview previously. Basically the install process is the same and pretty straightforward rather. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this terminal. So I'm gonna go that's all you gotta do to install deluge because it's, it's available in the default Debian repository. I already have it installed, so there was no need for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove it or not. So there's an issue with um there's an issue with installing Linux applications and after the after the completion of the and when the installation is complete is complete, it basically like ruins the screencasting. And um, which is basically why I won't be going ahead with an install. But I'll basically go through the process with you just to show you how easy and straightforward it is. That is, if you want to get comfortable with the Linux terminal, it's pretty straightforward. So basically, sudo means super user do, and just enter the rest of the um, the rest of the command necessary to execute the function that you you want it to. Transmission. So transmission is another, another popular. Transmission is another popular um, Linux client, client, current client, and um, it works pretty great for what it is. So like I said, we're not going to be going ahead with installing it. This is just to show you that it's actually available in the default um, Linux repositories that come that come with the uh, Linux Debian repository that comes with the. Uh, Linux subsystem in Chrome OS. This is just to show you that um, it actually does work. So we can about that. The same thing goes with Qubit Torrent. It's available in the Linux repository. You can also go ahead and try and install that. I'm yeah, showing an example of how to install that. Oh, we made a mistake there. Spelled the single R. And there you see, we also have Qubit, Qubit Torrent available. And the last item on our list today is BigglyBitty. BigglyBitty is another open source variant, a variation of a Torrent client. And it's also based on the open source views. Initially, I was going to go through the press of installing views. However, I found it out to be pretty cumbersome to install. On the Linux subsystem, so I was gonna spare you all that trouble. If you have ever preferred to install views, I'll leave a link down in the description as well. But um, BigglyBit, since BigglyBit is based on, um, on views, you're benefiting from the same functionality and, and you know, Fluid is based on everything that views is known for. So, right off the bat, you wanna go down to the um, to the BigglyBT website and download the Linux client. Enhancing .sh, so that's .sh file. So you want to go ahead and download that. So once you've done that, I already have it downloaded. So once you've done that, you want to move it from your, you want to move it from your traditional download directory. You move it from down from the download directory to the Linux directory. Right, so that's, that's exactly what you want to do. Um, and once you move it to the Linux directory, you can go to your your um, your Linux centric file manager. We'll leave a link in the description to a video showing you how to install um, your traditional Linux um, file managers that are effectively alternatives to the default file manager of Chrome OS. 
So this will basically give you access to some functions that you wouldn't be able, um, you, you, tra you tra traditionally wouldn't have access to on the default file manager. So sort of like um, being able to enable and disable permissions for files. So there is the bigly bt file right here. So it's in the so the default Linux directory is my home folder. Right? So the default Linux directory is here is gonna be in your home folder and um slash your your username, right? And once you once you're in that directory, so let me just show you what I'm talk, talking about again. So let's go to the file system. So from the file from, from the file system, go directly to the home directory and then you'll find your name and then you'll find your default Linux directory. And then you find the default Linux directory. Um, that you can also access from the default file manager. So right now my file manager is not displaying the content of my default directory which is weird. I don't know what is happening but um just don't worry about it. Um usually a restart will fix that. And a disclaimer, I'm on the developer channel, I believe, or yeah, I, I think I think the last time I checked I was on the developer channel. But let's dive right into the install of BigglyBT. So the first thing you want to do with your file manager, so you can use any of any of them. You can use Nemo, you can use GNOME file manager, you can use Tunner. You found all of this available in the in the video in the link description. Anyway, we can um, get back to we can get back to the install of BigglyBT. So right click on that and head over to properties. And right from the properties, you can set it. You can set the default application, right? So in this case, I set it to run run software. However, what is most important is whether or not we can execute it as a, as a program. So that's why you come over to permissions and make sure that allow this file to run as program is, is checked. If you don't check this, it won't run at all. So I tried to run it with run software, it didn't work. And then the tradi I went the traditional route of installing it via the terminal, the Linux terminal, and that's exactly what we're going to do right now. I'm going to go to the app launcher and search for terminal. And once your terminal is open, you're going to cd. So cd basically means current directory. So you're going to use the cd command to determine the directory of the file. But Let's use the list command first. So we're gonna go ls to see what's in this current home directory. So as you can see right there, we have our bigly bt. We have our bigly bt installer right there, right? So you're gonna highlight that, and once you do that, it the, the system automatically copies it, which is great. So yes, what you're gonna do next? You go. And paste that. So you see the installer start. So a very important thing to keep in mind is that the installer won't proceed at all if you don't enable the permission. The if you don't change, if you don't allow the file to run as a program here from under the permissions. So keep that in mind. It won't execute at all. So right now, the installer has started, and here's the installer window right here. So you can let's maximize that so you can see what it is. So like I already have it installed. I, yes, I already have it installed. So let's go ahead and I believe so. Yes, I already have it installed actually. So if if I proceed with it right now, it's basically it's gonna overwrite what I already have. But let's see if we can do that.
yeah so it's basically gonna reinstall it it appears so once you do once you have it in, installed um just let's just sit through the process please don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more videos like this so click on finish and there it is big list installed you can go ahead and try install it and run it and you see and there it is so right now as you can see if you've used views before you can tell that it's pretty much the same interface you know, except this is a little bit of a lighter yeah it has a little bit of a, of a grayish tone to it as opposed to the traditional blue associated with views that's it for this video guys thanks for watching please subscribe